This demo is going to be powered by a 13 kilowatt 50 amp generator. Equipment is going to be a 2 inch hose, 110 volt cords, polyurethane joint filler, an 8 inch 110 volt shot blaster, a 9 inch joint saw, and a 110 volt 3 motor HEPAVAC. Readying the saw for the cutting, the blade that's on the machine currently is a blade made to remove joint filler. Since the joints on this job are open, these blades could work, but it'd be a waste of the blade to try to cut concrete when really they're made to do a little bit of concrete and also remove joint fill. Instead, what's being installed is a standard diamond blade that's used to cut joints, cut concrete. These blades are made to have a rotation. Uh, what's being verified is the rotation of the blade based on the motor turning, the direction that it goes, and then of course how that's going to influence the life and the performance of the blade. As the process starts, what's going to be observed is the fact that the vacuum is not really collecting the dust that's being made as the cutting is taking place. Reason for this is because the joint is open. Normally a joint with filler has a, a dam that protects the air in front of it so that the dust doesn't escape. To basically mimic that condition, sand, this is just leftover quartz, is poured into the open joint that little bit of material will create a dam for the air so that the velocity of the dust that leaves the blade hits the edge of that sand and then goes up to the vacuum port which is by design without something in front of the blade the velocity of the dust is greater than the suction and of course blows out the side in the front of the machine with this little bit of filler in the joint it too is also picked up but more importantly it keeps that fine dust that's being created during the cutting inside the cutting area and then taken away to the vacuum. This of course adds time but there's really not much of an alternative when it comes to the amount of dust that would otherwise be blowing around the job site. The reason for cutting these joints in this particular area is these these are tool joints. Because of the filler that's going to be applied it's important that there be enough space in the bottom of the joint for some sand. Sand is going to be used so that there's not three sides bonded when that filler is installed. If it was only shot blasted or only cleaned out and then filled, the filler would bond to all three sides, the bottom and both sides of the joint. By cutting a cavity in there, it gives a place where that sand is going to provide that cushion so that there's not three sides bonded of that joint filler. Some of the joints are broken. So some of the concrete is, of course, cut away. This will be addressed when the shot blasting is done to prepare the joint. But for the cutting process, the primary aim here is to remove whatever weak materials might exist in the bottom of the joint. But more importantly, make that space, that cavity where that filler of sand is going to be able to occupy before the joint filler is placed on top. The joints on this side of the floor are just cut. On one side was an old slab that had tool joints. This side is simply cut joints, control joints that were cut in at the time of placement. Next is going to be the shop blasting. The shop blasting is done over all the joints that were tooled into the slab because there's really no good way to clean the vertical walls of these tool joints. The saw could be used, but then of course the joint would get much wider which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the nice part about the shop blaster is it does the preparation of the sidewalls as well as the bottom all in one step, and it does it dustless. Closer inspection of the joint before the treatment shows that the grinding obviously didn't clean down inside that joint. Where it's dark is obviously going to affect the bonding of the filler. After cutting and shot blasting, the inside of the joint is clean. There is that space made and the vertical walls are clean.
Anywhere there are these tool joints, the shot blasters run over it the same way. And the primary purpose is to clean down inside those joints. It does remove any debris too, but more importantly, it's to profile and clean those sidewalls so that bonding is as complete as it can be. Just like on the horizontal surfaces of the floor, anywhere that a coating is applied, it needs to achieve maximum adhesion. With the preparation complete and the joints pre-filled with dry quartz about 50%, the polyurethane joint filler is mixed. This is a two component product made for this application. It is a product that's made to be compressed and elongated as the slab grows or shrinks from thermal changes over the course of the year. It's a two component product that's mixed and then poured. Unfortunately, there's no way to speed up this process it is something that does require the mixing and the pouring in place as opposed to maybe a pump. As the material is applied, the idea is to fill the joint fully and then a little bit above the surface so that adhesion along the horizontal surface is complete as it can be. Once the product is cured, minimum five hours, or in this case overnight, a seven inch hand grinder is used to cut down the overfill. Here again, this process, unlike with maybe something that could be shaved or reduced in another way so that a large grinder could then run right over it, this particular material has some elasticity to it, which means a big grinder running over it would probably just chop at it and leave it a little bit high of the surface where with a hand grinder it's a focused attempt to make that material flush with the surrounding surface. This floor will be ground after this process but the aim with the hand grinding is simply to get it flush with the concrete. And that's about it for this joint filling procedure.